Hi, and welcome to the morning meeting. This is your 10 minute home care training with Julio Briones. Um, today we are going to have a topic that really comes up a lot and, you know, it is the anatomy of your sales meeting. So before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. You know, don't forget to hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up and let us know what you think. What is your definition of a great meeting? What is the desired outcome? Leave it, leave uh, your thoughts in the comments below and also let us know what topics you would like for us to cover in future videos. All right, so what happens? We've worked hard, we've gone, we've qualified our facilities, we understand that this is the place we want to be. We have done our due diligence. We know what services they offer. We know what type of facility they are. We've figured out who we need to talk to. We finally, after possibly monumentous effort, we get a scheduled meeting and we get to talk to that social worker, that executive director, that administrator, that doctor, that attorney, whoever it is, that person, that go-to key person that will get our foot in the door and begin that flow of referrals towards us. What happens? How do we go to this meeting? How do we not screw this up? Today, that's exactly what we're gonna discuss. We're gonna go over a few tips that are gonna help you make your meeting a little bit more successful. Number one, and this is the most important, and I already mentioned this in my introduction to our discussion today, be prepared. Okay, get to know the names, know a little bit about the company, know who their clients are. Because if you don't understand the place that you're dealing with, who do they serve? What problem do they solve? What problem, more importantly, do they have that you need to take care of? Okay. Everyone is going to tell you, yes, the biggest problem is discharging the client, but it's not. It's not always the problem. Every type of facility will have their own unique issues that they require help with. And many of these, of uh, these issues can be solved by private home care agencies, by Medicaid agencies, by whatever it is, the type of service that we're coming in to provide, if that is our specialty. And we need to understand this. So we also need to know, get an idea as to who our competitors are. Many times in, you know, especially in facilities like skilled nursing hospitals, and some assisted livings, you will see the marketing materials for your competitors right in the lobby or somewhere easily accessible. And also when you go in and sit down throughout the course of the conversation, at some point you may feel comfortable enough to ask who else they work with. Have that understanding because in order for you to have and to be able to properly outline your market differentiators, what makes you special, why they should send people to you. If you, if you don't know what everyone else is doing, then you won't know how you are special. All right, how, how are you going to be able to do or provide a better value to their clients and do this? Please keep in mind that most of these referral partners do not want to deal with you in the first place. They already will either have their favorites or if they're new in the industry, they're a little wary of who they're going to refer out because many times they've heard the horror stories that they have directly been burned by other home care agencies that have proven unreliable or they have recommended private caregivers to try to sell their clients, save their clients some money and just something has happened and a lot of times skepticism is big big, big in this industry. So you're walking into someone and, and this is the key to keep in mind and why understanding the, your value proposition and understanding your market differentiators is so important. You are asking someone who has absolutely no need 
for the service that you are providing on a personal level. They have no need for this in most cases. And you are asking them to put not only their reputation, but potentially their job or the reputation of the company that they represent on the line to refer you to someone who in many cases, depending on the facility you're dealing with, has desperate need for your services. Think about this. How would you feel walking in? Another thing you have to keep in mind when you're walking in is, you know, these people that are doing these professionals that are doing these jobs, many times they are bombarded. I have spoken to many, many administrators, many social workers, nurses, people that provide these referrals. And here's the thing, your average referral source, the average person who has the authority and capability of referring clients to your agency will be seen and bothered by an average of 20 to 40 salespeople per day, not just home care. Remember, there's durable medical suppliers. There are pharmaceutical reps. There are people who provide cleaning services, who provide all sorts of services vying for their time. And this is why some in some facilities, it is extremely difficult to get past the receptionist and get that initial meeting and why that initial meeting is so incredibly valuable to you. Be prepared. Understand the facility, understand where you are going and understand the needs of their average client. They will not refer to you if they do not feel that you are going to service their clients better. Also, tip number two, understand your value proposition and your market differentiators. I know I've already said this a few times and honestly um, up here, I will post a link to my video on explaining and understanding value and your market differentiator. The, this is so incredibly important because it, at some point pricing is going to be discussed. And here's what happens when people talk about pricing to referral partners. The first thing they do is put themselves in the position of the client. Well, I do not think I would be able to afford this. Therefore, I do not understand why I would bow, you know, refer them to my, my clients. In the US, the typical rule of thumb is that they will refer somewhere between three and five if they don't just have a wall where you know, they're gonna put your brochures up. But your average referral partner will refer three to five companies that provide a like service. You wanna be in the party. You don't want to be exclusive. Please get that out of your mind. But in order for you to be included, you will have to understand how to properly explain the value you provide and what sets you apart. As I've mentioned in other videos, there's one phrase that is used just a lot in this industry that I absolutely hate. And that is we go above and beyond or something along those lines. And I hate that statement because it is, it is vague fluff. Be specific. If you are going to use a statement or a similar statement uh, to try to express and to use and to verbally paint the picture that you really do go out of your way for your clients, make sure you're backing it up with examples. Show real examples, explain what's going on and let them understand. This is a people oriented business and one this will I'll save this for another video, but you know, you have to understand that your, your agency, when you're doing home care, you are really running three businesses wrapped into one. You are running a sales company that happens to sell home care services. You are running a, a, a personal caregiver recruitment and staffing company and you are running a people-centered service business. You have to be able to wrap it around your head that all of these go hand in hand 
And this is what people need to know. More times than not, no matter how long the person has been in the industry, they will not have a clear understanding of what you do. And it is up to you as an owner or a marketer or business developer to make this clear to them. You need to learn what their needs are and how, how to um, work with them on their level. You also need to educate them on what you are looking for and how they need to work with you. And you have to do all of this while constantly reassuring them that you are not going to damage their reputation and that you're going to properly care for their client. This conversation changes slightly depending on who your audience is. You're not going to have the same conversation with a social worker or in the same manner as you will with a nurse or as you will with an attorney versus an administrator of one of these facilities. Each person will have their own nuances. And again, we will talk about this um, at some point. And also you can always visit the links below and you know we, we can discuss coaching options for a more expansive approach to all of this. Um, also, this is a good opportunity, I think. Please don't forget, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Just had to cut in with that momentarily. So now the next tip, I forget what number we're up to, that I'm gonna give you is have something with you. If you are going to present brochures, have some brochures. If you're going to have those canvas tote bags as a giveaway item, please have them with you. Be prepared when you come in and do this and make sure you leave something for them to look at and be able to hand to potential clients. You know, we'll, we'll go into the anatomy of a tote bag in another video, but for now, just have understand that you have to have something to give them. I do, I am a big proponent of have as a minimum, you should have a canvas tote bag, two pens, a minimum of two to three business cards, about five brochures and some sort of giveaway item and any other literature that you want to leave for them to review. Um, too much is not good, not enough is even worse. All right, so now comes, you've gone, you've sat down, you've understood, you've presented value, you've educated them on how to work with you, you've educated yourself on how to work with them. You're asking the key probing questions throughout this whole time you know, well, what type of client do you get? How, you know, what's your average discharge? You know, then you are going to offer help. Please, this is another one that is extremely important. Do not ever tell the person you are having a conversation with. If you need help with anything, let me know. Please, I will tell you this. If you tell me that I will personally call you the next day and ask you to come paint my house. That is a very non-specific request or offering of help. If you are going to come in and offer help, let's use an example. Let's say I was coming in and I was going to discuss with a skilled nursing facility so social worker or social work director that I'm trying to work with. I would ask, well, as part of your planning process, do your potential discharges ever ask you questions about how home care works or what the process is? the answer is most likely going to be yes, especially when we're talking about discharging someone who needs help. The follow-up question I would ask at that point would be, well, who do, how do you usually handle those questions? Do you just tell them to ask to call the home care agency? And is that the point you give the referrals? Because if that's what you do, I do believe I can help you. I'm more than willing to come in without any branded material, no sales pitch or anything, but I can help you on your family planning meetings if you give me time. I can even come in and just do a Q&A for a couple of families that are getting ready to discharge. Once again, no sales pitch to them, nothing branded, nothing to let them know what, where I'm from, but just to help you so that they can make informed decisions and have any questions or uncertainties answered and feel more comfortable about the discharge process. They may not take you up on this, but to offer yourself as an expert to help them 
you have done a valuable service to them and that is make their job that's already difficult a lot easier. As a bonus tip, I'm gonna give you the one the one way that I have personally used that for me it works and you must practice this, but it's a good way to close off a meeting with a potential referral partner. Paint a picture for them verbally. Say, well, listen, Mr. Social Worker, Mrs. Nurse, you know, Mr. Um, whoever, Mr. Potential Referral Partner, Mrs. Uh, Administrator, whoever this person may be, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I really understand that you're busy and I appreciate this, but here, let me, let me ask one thing before I go. And please, this is just something so that I have a better understanding should you decide to refer to me. Let's say that we're having a meeting a year from now or that you're having this meeting with your supervisor or whoever it is you report to. And they ask you to go over all the agencies that you have referred to in the last 12 months. And you're going to refer and you're, you've decided to use me and you have nothing but nice things to say. And you, you want to tell this person, hey, yeah, I've used a lot of agencies and these are them, but this is my my agency of choice because over the last year they've done fill it in what would you what would i have to do or what would an agency have to do for the for over the course of the year to get that high of a glowing recommendation when you're explained to someone else why you use them the reason this works to wrap up the meeting is because after you've explained everything to them and after you've had clear conversation with them, you're asking them to put themselves in a situation in which they are endearing themselves to you. You're getting them thinking as in future tense as having worked with you. This puts, puts them into a positive note. This also gets them thinking of what a positive experience of working with your agency would look like if they had to explain it to someone else. Furthermore, it gives you a very clear roadmap of what needs to happen for them to continue to work with you should they send you a referral. This has been your 10 minute training. I hope you found this useful. Please don't forget to give this video a like, leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We look forward to our next training session. Thank you.